Charles, this is Kosala, also known as Morventus, bringing you the first of two casts I've got for you today, Malia. And and for those of you who've been following along, you know that I cast my own games um, and my learning experience in the Bronze League as I attempt attempt to master the Zerg race. It's a beautiful morning here in the United Kingdom of England. Right, it's, the sun is just starting to come up and snow is on the ground and it is a nice crisp morning in the English countryside. And the first the first cast I've got for you today is going to be one where I'm highlighting the incredible importance of scouting. Now I know what you're thinking. We already learned the importance of scouting in a previous video, now why didn't I do it here? This is an excellent question. Uh, this is where I went incredibly brain dead and, in, and, and forgot, forgot to follow one of my cardinal rules always scout as best possible. Uh, and I will show you what happens when I don't scout because the ensuing hilarity that came out here is certainly something that I have not seen ever in a game but uh, it only happened because I let it happen so I've got nobody to blame but myself so let's get on with it here in the top right corner we've got the red zerg that is myself in the top left corner we have our opponent Graggle Rustra Graggle Graggle Rustra Greg Larustre Greg Larustre that's right all right I'm going to I'm going to call him Greg Larustre because that just sounds cooler all right here we go I've, I've scouted him out in the first round no problem at all Primary scouting worked out well. I've got my Zergling running little patrols around here. Uh, and he let me have this Zergling in his base for ages and ages and ages and ages. And I had all the time in the world to do my primary scouting well. And as you can see here, not much going on. He's got my, some, some uh, SEVs doing their thing. Uh, he's got no gas. He's got three... Uh, Three, he's got three um, uh, depots on in the front of his base. I, I have no idea why. No barracks has come up. So I'm thinking, okay, let's uh, let's do our our thing as normal and uh, and uh, turtle away. So let me just let me just speed this forward a little bit because the fun really happens a lot later. And the beginning is is the way uh, these things normally begin. Now let's take a look at his base. Barracks just going up. One gas going up. Two gas going up. And I'm I'm seeing all of this stuff happening. And uh, the first thing I thought, well, that's all. He's getting two gas nice and early. Why is he doing that? Uh, and I just sat around watching this. Um, and while that's happening, I went ahead and, and got my second base. Uh, my drone count is going up. My gas is going up. My spawning pool is out. Everything as per normal. Now, I'm seeing the first barracks go up, and I'm thinking, okay, so he's going to get some marines out there. Nothing weird about that. Then a factory went up. And I thought, okay, this is probably just a regular 1-1-1 build. The 1-1-1 one, one, one build, in case anybody's confused about that, is when, when Terran start out building one factory, one barracks, and one star, starport. Um, and that's a very standard sort of Terran opening, nothing weird about that. So I thought, this is probably what this is. And so far, I'm seeing all of this. I'm seeing all of this. But instead of getting a starport, an armory comes up. And uh, then I thought, well, that's odd. That's a bit early. Right, and then he's popping out these massive amounts of, of, um, of, uh, of, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute, let me just uh, try to learn how to speak. Massive amounts of, of supply depots. And then this happens. A Thor comes out. This is the first unit that he's made. Uh, and I'm seeing this too, because up until this point, he hadn't nuked me at all. So th there's, there's, this is very odd. There's absolutely no Marines. There is, there's nothing, in fact there's no units whatsoever except for one Thor. And I'm thinking, well that's odd. Well, it is. But after thinking that, I actually didn't do anything. Well, I plopped out a bunch of uh, Zerglings as my initial defense in two corners of the map right here. I'm coming out with my evolution chamber, I'll plop up a Roach Warren in the end, all of this fairly standard stuff. I thought, okay, he's got, he's got a Thor, well maybe he just wants some weirdo defense. So I thought everything was cool, let's just continue expanding. So I've got, I've got my start nailed down pretty decently these days. I've got now two, two hatcheries up very quickly at 34 supply. I've got plenty of overloads up to my, in case of any overload killing disasters. I've got my basic buildings coming out. My first defensive army is out there and I'm checking up to lair. 
Now up until uh, up until this point everything is reasonably cool. Now what I should have done here is I should have plopped up a spire and then gone off to do some secondary scouting to figure out why on earth the first unit he made was a Thor. Because as you can see here, his second unit is also a Thor. This is the weirdest Terran opening in the history of mankind. Because what the dude has here is absolutely no basic units whatsoever. And he's only got three Thors. Which is an extremely expensive beginning indeed. And I could quite easily have gotten a bunch of mutilists, run around here and totally wrecked havoc on his mineral line, which is exactly what I should have done. This is however not what I did. As you can see, we are still now looking at no spire. I could also have quite easily teched that up to hive, which I didn't do either. But, and spread out to a third base, which, yes, I, I didn't do either. So while all of this was going on and he was giving me all the time in the world, I was busy um, spreading out and droning up, as I should be, but I didn't get the buildings up fast enough and I didn't do that secondary scouting. Now let's take a look at what he's doing in his base. Four Thors. Okay, let's speed this puppy up a little bit to the 15 minute marker and let's see what he's amassed in the form of an army. And I'm sure you can see where this is going. Right, because it's just becoming completely ludicrous. There is now six Thors. Six Thors. We are 12 minutes into the game <coughs> and he's got He's, he's got six Thors. He's about to do the weirdest opening early game rush I I ever with a bunch of Thors. Now, see at this point, if you go and look at what I'm doing, Spire is up. Now the question is, why oh why did I not get a Mutalisk and run over here and take a look at this? Because had I done that, I would have known the proper response would have been to immediately tech up to a hive and then get broodlords and, and, some, and some roaches and we'd have had this thing completely nailed down. But that's not what I did. Instead I did absolutely nothing other than expanding. So I just expanded, forgot to scout. Now I didn't waste my money either, I mean I didn't create loads of units, I've just got my basic units, that's good. I've got my base defenses going up, that is good. I've got my expansions going up. That is good. But what is not good is that I have not scouted. So I don't know what's coming at me. I'm saving up my larva to a certain degree, as you can see here. I've got seven there. I've got uh, I've got eleven there. So I am I'm prepared to wait until he comes in before I do anything. But I did not utilize the time with the minerals and resource advantage I have here. I did not utilize the time to tech up to make sure I had every building I needed. Because I simply wasn't expecting him to bum rush me with a bunch of Thors. Because let's face it, I mean, who does that? I'll tell you who. It's Mr. Greg Lurustre. So here we are. Everyone is waiting for this incredible Thor rush to come our way. And uh, I mean, the, the carnage is just hilarious, as you will see in, in, in mere moments. So let's get to that. The dreaded, uh, the dreaded 20th minute of the game, when when the incredible Thor rush occurs. And here we are. Here we are. Eight times faster time. Ah, the Thor. I never used to build Thors when I was Terran. I played Terran before I started playing Zerg. And I always did tanks and marines, and somehow the Thor never sort of factored into anything. Okay, here we go, here we go. Let's take a look at this. We've got... 8, 12, 13 Thors. They can barely make it down that, that ramp. We have 13 Thors. And what do we have? We've got absolutely nothing. Let's take a look at our army tabs. Uh, that's my army cost. Units, there we go, there we go. He's got 13 Thors, and now I can see it, because he's coming towards my my my, uh, my Zergling and my Overlord, and I can see that he's got 13 Thors. What do I do? I completely panic, and I throw out 18 Zerglings. Now, why am I throwing out Zerglings, you might ask? And the answer is this. I do not know. I simply do not know. 18, 17 Zerglings. I'm morphing some of these into... into am I morphing into paintings? Let me take a look. Yes, I'm morphing some of them into banelings, which is probably a good idea, but um, there really isn't a whole lot that I can do about this at this point, because what the, the proper answer to this is that I'm producing 32 zerglings, but that probably isn't going to help. 
because the proper answer to this is really to, to throw out a whole bunch of corruptors and I've only got those guys uh, sorry not corruptors I mean uh, I mean uh, broodlords right and I can't do that because I have not teched up to greatest fire and I have not teched up to hive so it's way too late to do that right so these these uh, 13 uh, or 13 doors are gonna completely annihilate my uh, my bases because I got no hive and I got no brood lords and absolutely no time to take up either of those. Sheer idiocy, my friends. Sheer idiocy. Right. So basically, remember this very important message: Beware the Thor, especially if you see your opponent is named Grad Lurostre. My drones attempting to do some peculiar defense there, totally failing. My Corruptors coming over to do, well, God knows what. Yes, they're tossing in some of their special ability, but uh, that really didn't help us much because there was nothing to damage them. We have some Zerglings coming in for a heroic effort. The Queen basically just showed up and went, what the fuck? Right, and then uh, let's see what else is going on. Do we have some Zerglings coming our way? No, it's all over. My 38 Zerglings got duped before they could even see the light of day. And that, my friends, is the end of that. I mean, look at this ridiculous nonsense. Right, yes, in, in 13 doors. And they're barely damaged. So here we go, boys and girls. The morning lesson of the day is, for the love of God, do not forget your secondary scouting. That's what futurists are for. And they're so good at it. So let them do their thing. So that was that. That was that for this show. Thank you for watching. This afternoon, I am going to flop out a video that has everything to do with uh, Banelings. Banelings and the Baneling defense gone right. That went extremely well. So looking forward to that. Have a lovely day, people. Comment on the, on the, on the, on what you think below. Subscribe, uh, thumbs up, and stuff of that nature. Excellent. Ta-ta.